From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Ben Tyler, Johnny. Transworld Fidelity. Oh, hi, Ben. Are you free at present? If the price is right. I mean, are you on a job? It's beginning to sound like it. Can you be on a plane for Algiers in two hours? Sure. Who's the client? Uh, Lorco Limited, Amsterdam. You know, they're the... Diamond Cutters, an old firm. Big-time deals all over the world. Check. What happened? Oh, one of their couriers just dropped dead in the Algiers airport. Oh, too bad. He was carrying a briefcase with $100,000 worth of set stones. Top-grade diamonds. Don't tell me, Ben. Let me guess. That's right, Johnny. The briefcase is missing. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Home Office, Transworld Fidelity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during investigation of the Lorco Diamonds matter. Item one, $324.60, transportation. A routine plane flight to North Africa and the city of Algiers. It was an easy trip, and I felt relaxed and comfortable feeling that was rudely terminated about 10 seconds after I got off the plane. You are Monsieur Dollar, are you not? Yeah, that's right. I am Inspector Marcus of the Algerian Customs Police. Oh, how are you, Inspector? Oh, quite well, Monsieur, and vastly reassured now that you have arrived on the scene of the crime. Oh? You see, I have implicit faith in special investigators. I have encountered them in the past, so I have no doubt, but this little affair will prove most simple to you, Monsieur. I see. I feel that in a mere matter of hours, voila, you will produce the guilty culprit like un lapin out of a chapeau. Inspector, I'm beginning to feel a cold wind from the north. That's odd for this time of year, isn't it? A mere passing breeze, monsieur. I shall now assume my official attitude. And that is? Extreme courtesy, complete cooperation, and the devoted service of my meager talents. On orders, you understand, from my superiors in Paris. And now, monsieur, if you will accompany me to my office. Delighted to. After you, Alphonse. My name is Pierre. Oh, sorry. Just a whimsy. Oh, yes, yes, I know. I have heard the joke. Both jokes. Uh-huh. Uh, this way, monsieur. A man from the local diamond firm is waiting for us. A special representative, so he informs me. And so, since you yourself are a special investigator, I could perceive a certain advantage in letting him give you the facts, as I believe you say it in the States. Tie our tails together, sit back, and watch the fur fly, is that it? Well, he is a trifle excitable, but your metaphor, however, escapes me. Oh, I doubt that, Inspector Marcus. In fact, I doubt if much of anything escapes you. You are too kind. Except, of course, $100,000 worth I of diamonds. I spoke too hastily. <laughs> Vanished, disappeared, right under your nose. Oh, uh, well, but the, there were extenuating circumstances. Oh, I'll bet there were. Uh, tell me something confidentially. Did your superiors in Paris really blow their tops? Monsieur Dollar, if I may borrow one of your more colorful expressions, they said I had probably goofed. <laughs> I'd met that same attitude before with local officials. To them, sending in an outsider implied they couldn't do the job themselves. And Inspector Marcus was on an even hotter spot. The air terminal was a port of entry to Algeria, under his jurisdiction, Customs Police. As he said, he'd goofed. Maybe. It is a matter which hath entire pass all apprehension. But he was right on one thing. Hans Zeindorf, the Lorco representative, was a trifle excitable. In Amsterdam, it is unthinkable such thing have happened like this. Even in your New York, mein Herr Dollar, it cannot have happened. But here, in Algiers... It have happened. Yeah, yeah, this beautiful diamond gone. All gone. Ah, It's like barbarians. This Africa is no place for diamonds. Maybe you ought to tell them that in Kimberley. It's differently there. It's entirely different. All right, Mr. Zeindorf. Suppose you tell me just what happened. Who can know, my Herr... Fifteen years, this courier has worked for Lorco Company. We are thinking he is trustworthy. Entire trustworthy. Well, even a trustworthy man can die of heart failure. Ah, but he has never had these heart failing before. All right, but... 
Perhaps it would be better if I were to, with your permission, of course, Monsieur Seindorf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You tell. I am not talk this English much good. Uh, precisely, precisely. Uh, these are the facts, Monsieur Dollar. The local courier, a man named Paul Gruber, arrived on the plane from Amsterdam yesterday morning. Yeah, yeah. Did you know he was arriving? I did not know, but the point is a very clever one. So, a short while before landing, Monsieur Gruber was taken suddenly ill. A doctor met the plane, and the stricken man was removed by stretcher and taken to the emergency clinic. In 20 minutes, monsieur, he was dead. Diagnosis, heart failure. Mais c'est la vie. Was there an autopsy, Inspector? Ah, another excellent point, monsieur Deller. Thank you. Yeah, do not mention it. An autopsy is being performed this afternoon. Good. So the courier died. And then the briefcase? It was delivered along with his other personal effects, unopened to the customs property agent here at the airport. And his name, the property agent? André Jourdain. He was very busy at the moment, left the briefcase lying on his desk, intending at the first opportunity to register and place it in the vault. But the opportunity didn't come, is that it? Ah, precisely, precisely. Only a few minutes later, I heard a gunshot. Monsieur, he was lying on the floor in a pool of blood. He had been struck on the head. The briefcase was gone. All gone. This beautiful diamond gone entire. Yeah. When did you find out what was in the briefcase, Inspector? Uh, Almost two hours later. I radioed the local firm in Amsterdam, informing them of the death of their employee. They replied immediately and stated that the briefcase contained a hundred thousand dollars worth of diamond set pieces. Works of art, beautiful. One brooch, one uh, necklace, uh, two bracelets. Uh, precisely, precisely. Ah, yes, yes, yes. The jury was being flown here on approval for examination by a prospective buyer. Name of the buyer? The Countess Maria de Tolia. What do you know about her? Ah, uh, Monsieur Dallor. If you had seen her, you would not ask. She is exquisite, lovely, chic, charming, spirited, full of the joie de vie. And no doubt loaded with potatoes. Eh, With a woman like that, who would ever inquire? I would. Since it looks as though she might be the only person in Algiers who knew that a hundred grand worth of jewelry was coming in on that plane. Uh, May we, may we. But she could not have known that the courier was going to drop dead in the airport. Uh, A good point, Inspector. Uh, Merci, monsieur. What about that property agent, André Jourdain? Any chance of talking to him? But of course, if he is yet able to talk... Then I guess I'll... Talking is not enough, my dear. Relax, Mr. Zeindorf. You're covered by insurance. Insurance is money. It's not my diamonds. Oh, well, if you don't want the money, you can always waive your claim. Waive my... My dear dollar, are you think that I am crazily? That I am entire crazily? I talked to the plane crew who'd come in on the flight with a dying courier. I talked to Inspector Marcus's men, who'd been with him when he found the property agent lying on the floor of his office. I didn't expect much, and I got just that. But it didn't matter. I figured I may have had my man spotted already. The same old story. An ambitious and underpaid government agent opening a briefcase to register its contents and seeing the diamonds there for the taking, hiding them quickly, then a fake slugging and firing a gun at a non-existent thief. Yeah, an old, old story. Expense account item two, $3.40. Transportation into town and taxi fare to the hospital of Our Lady of Sorrows. Inspector Marcus had phoned ahead to authorize my visit. One of the sisters led me down the corridor to the door of Andre Jardine's room. She motioned silently and then turned away. I stepped inside and closed the door. Monsieur? You're Andre Jardine? Uh, me, oui. But yes. What do you want? My name is Johnny Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. My company is the underwriter on the Lorco Diamonds. Why have you come here? Well, to ask a couple of questions. Of course, if you'd like to consult an attorney before... I have nothing to conceal, monsieur. What do you wish to know? Just exactly what happened when that briefcase disappeared. I have told it already to Inspector Marcus. Uh, Yes, I know. So now would you mind telling it to me? But there is no... Bien. I was working at the files when someone entered my office. I turned around and saw a man standing there, pointing a gun at me. Ever seen it before? No, monsieur. What did he look like? Well, he was quite tall. Heavy set? No, very thin, tall and thin. European, I believe. All right. What did he do? He ordered me to turn around, stepped up behind me, struck me with the gun. 
I fell against my desk. He grabbed the briefcase and ran to the door. You were still conscious? Oui, monsieur, but in terrible pain. I fumbled for my gun in the drawer of the desk and fired one shot. It is all I can remember. Uh Uh-huh. You hadn't by any chance opened that briefcase? I had been too busy. And you didn't know what was in it? Not until they told me today. Andre, I wonder if you'd mind if I lifted a corner of that bandage and took a look at that wound on your head. If you are careful, it is very painful. Oh, sure, I'll be careful. Uh, Lie still now, please. It'll just take a second. I'll lift this edge and... I think I am lucky to be alive. Mm. Yeah, very lucky. Okay, thanks. It is nothing. Andre, do you happen to know the Countess d'Atalia? The Countess? Oh, monsieur, she is unquestionably... Yeah, I know. She's lovely, exquisite, charming, chic... Well, thanks for your cooperation, Andre. A pleasure, Monsieur Dollar. Take care of that head. It's the only one you've got. (laughs) You Americans are so whimsical. Oh, yeah, we're all crazily, entire crazily. My pet theory was starting to limp. That slugging wasn't phony. It had taken 14 stitches to close the cut in Andre's head. Whoever hit him hadn't been kidding. They meant it for keeps. I walked down the corridor and stood waiting for the elevator, thinking it over, trying to figure it out. But no go. I needed more facts. And a moment later, I got more facts. Monsieur Duller, I thought I would find you here. Uh, A clever piece of deduction, Inspector. Merci bien, monsieur. Don't mention it. What's on your mind? There should be something. Well, there's got to be some reason for that smug grin. What happened? Did the thief confess? Uh, Au contraire. I was on the point of asking what progress you were making on the case. You will be happy to hear none at all. Oh, that is too bad. Uh Uh-uh, Inspector. Eh? Extreme courtesy, complete cooperation, the devoted services of your meager talents. Remember? Touché, touché. Actually, I came to tell you that I now have the report of the autopsy. The courier who died of heart failure. Uh Ah. Only he did not die of heart failure, monsieur. Except, of course, in a very literal sense. Well, what did he die of? Poison. Well, that was the end of a good theory. The courier had started to get sick on the plane, so the robbery and the murder had been planned well in advance of his arrival. By somebody who'd known, he was bringing in diamonds. And so far, only one person fit the bill. As lovely, charming, and chic a suspect as you could ever hope to meet. The Countess Detalia. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Lorco Diamonds matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, a lovely woman lies beautifully, and a sinister whisper drifts out of the casbah. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>